Hey, Andrew Wolf here. In this video, I'm going to uh, provide an introduction overview of the physiology of the gastrointestinal system. So the gastrointestinal system um, includes uh, the uh, GI tract, which is a tube that goes from mouth to anus, and then organs that are also involved with, um, with the GI system, including the liver, and you can see tucked back behind here, the pancreas. Now, this picture here is a picture of an adult human that has a nice, well-developed, normal um, GI tract. But I want to start out with the story of the embryo. Now, remember, I've talked in previous videos about how when we are born, um, we have we start out as a tri, uh, trilaminar germ disc, and on one side of the disc we have the ectoderm, and the other side we have the endoderm, and then everything in the middle is the me mesoderm. Now, this disc wraps around, and we become a hollow tube. So very early on in life, we are essentially a hollow tube. So you can sort of s picture it now. Actually, I probably could draw it in three dimensions here, like this. I will give you the cutaway view. And that's the tube going down the middle. Okay. So, um, we are essentially a hollow tube, and interestingly enough, we are interacting with the environment on the outside through our senses, our eyes and our nose and our skin. And on the inside, through the endoderm, we are also interacting with the environment because we take the environment into this inner tube. So we are interacting with the environment on the inside. And, um, you know, I think it's just important to recognize um, that even though we are taking food into this inner tube, it is still part of the external environment, okay? And one of the play ways that this becomes very clear is because this external environment is filled with bacteria. So with that concept in mind, um, the overall purpose of the gastrointestinal tract is to interact with the environment in such a way to, that supports the growth, and development, and survival of the organism. Okay, so how does this hollow tube, this gastrointestinal tract, interact with the environment to support the organism? Well, it's, it does so by digesting food, which means, you know, things that we take into the mouth, the top of the tube. Digesting is the process of breaking down nutrients so that they can be absorbed. And then absorbing those nutrients. Absorption. And then the metabolism. Um, and that means both breaking down and building new, um, new things. And this primarily occurs in the liver where we synthesize new proteins and where we are where we are breaking down complex carbohydrates and creating new um, usable forms of car carbohydrates, in particular glycogen. and the same process with lipids. And then also excretion. We are removing back into the environment, out of our internal environment and into the external environment, um, things that are a threat to the organism, so wastes. And through the GI tract this means, you know, food that we can't, food stuff that we can't digest, And it also means a number of toxins, including ammonia, 
uh, bile, some heavy metals, and there's some other things too. There's also many things that are excreted through the uh, through the urinary tract as well. So these are the major functions and how the GI tract is interacting with the external environment to support the uh, the organism. And some other functions that it performs in order to um, perform these functions is secretion. So for instance, it secretes saliva in the mouth to um, start the digestion process and to aid in mobility of the uh, food bolus down into the uh, lower GI tract and it secretes um, acid and enzymes in the stomach and more enzymes um, in bicarb in the duodenum and a bunch of other things that and uh, they are all to aid digestion and absorption in the GI tract and then there's motility that also aids in absorption uh, by bringing things close to the absorptive surfaces of the GI tract and excretion. So secretion and motility are important functions but they are here to support the main functions that um, help the organism survive. Okay. So let's talk about, uh, we'll just give a broad overview and introduction to the various elements of the GI tract. So the GI tract, again, is this hollow tube that starts up in the mouth where we take food in, travels down the esophagus, goes through the stomach, uh, down through the du duodenum, and into the jejunum, and then through the ileum, and I'll, s I'll skip here through the colon and out the anus. So we start our pathway here in the mouth where we are taking in food. So the functions of the mouth are to masticate food, to break up large chunks into smaller chunks to aid digestion. and also in the mouth we have saliva that is being mixed in with food, food during the process of mastication and this is to moisten the food it's 99.5 percent water um, so really moistening is an important function of saliva and it also held, that helps to hold the food together in a bolus that can travel through the GI tract via peristalsis and saliva also has enzymes that begin digestion and it has immunologically active chemicals including um, immunoglobulin A and some lysozymes and peroxides that help to kill off some microorganisms and also protect the teeth. Okay, now the esophagus really is just a has a function of transport. The esophagus is a very interesting organism, organ I should say. It's a very interesting organ because of the way that it transports and I'm not going to talk too much about the esophagus um, here except when we get into talking about the physiology of gastroesophageal reflux disease. Um, but it really is an organ that only provides one function and that's motility. Um, then we have the GE junction here and that moves us into the stomach. The stomach sort of churns to break up chunks more and um, it does this through mechanical churning. 
the um, stomach is an extremely strong organism. And, you know, I recently listened to a, uh, a radio interview of a woman that was, um, that was looking at uh, fistulated cows. And fistulated cows are these cows that have um, a hole that's sort of built into their side so people can study their digestion. So what you have is this hole here. This is that is sort of made in the cow's stomach surg surgically that goes out through the side. And the reporter was actually um, talking about the experience of putting his hand in to the fistula and feeling the stomach and was amazed at just how strong um, the mechanical forces were in, in the cow's stomach. The, the stomach churns quite forcefully and this actually breaks up food into pieces. And then there are obviously chemical components here. There are enzymes and the enzymes are aided with these and particular enzymes are aided um, in, by the low pH within the stomach. So we also have acid secretion as well. Then, so the stomach is very acidic with a pH of around 1. Then in, as we pass through into the duodenum, then we start to uh, see the role of the pancreas. Because as you can see, the pancreas here drains into the duodenum. And one of the first things that, that you need to recognize in the duodenum is we have the pH that goes from 1 up to near 8. And it does this because the pancreas is secreting a lot of bicarb. And then also the digestion continues because of pancreatic enzymes. And these enzymes include um, things that break down um, proteins, proteases, and starches. And it also has some things that break down fats. More importantly, though, also here in the duodenum, through the common bile duct, we have the gallbladder that is releasing bile acids. And these bile acids um, break large globules of fat down into tiny globules of fat that are suspended within um, the liquid medium of the contents, contents of the duodenum. And then as we pass through into the, um, into the jejunum and the ileum, we have absorption. And this process continues throughout the small intestines. Um, and then we move into the, um, to the colon. Now the colon, um, the major function of the colon is to store and then excrete waste. The waste that has sort of been accrued throughout the rest of the GI tract. And, and all, also is water absorption. And this is... This is very important because the GI, the colon has a significant role in, in maintaining the water balance and electrolyte balance in the body by um, changing the amount of water that is absorbed as, uh, as fecal matter passes through the colon. Okay, so this brings my uh, brief video overview of the gastrointestinal system to an end. Um, in my next video, I am going to talk about the anatomy of, of the gut, including the layers of the gut, and the physiology of the gut, um, particularly focused on peristalsis and secretion. Um, if you want quick and easy access to the videos in my gastrointestinal system channel, then please click this link here, and I will see you in my next video. Thank you.